What is up everybody? It's the Inhuman One here with part one of the 100% guide for The Last Faith. In this video we're going to be focusing on clearing out the intro area as well as the first major boss, our first major series of bosses, so hopefully you guys are ready. We're going to be jumping into this new slave save slot right here. I did want to cover something really quickly though before we actually jump into the game. Although, each of these starting classes do have varying stats that kind of lean towards one type of uh, play style, if you will. This would be strength-based weapons, this would be dexterity-based weapons, the Stargazer would of course focus on spells, and the Marksman on guns. But regardless of which character you pick, you're going to have the exact same starting weapons and all that. So until you start finding the weapons that kind of fit your class, it, the actual character selection piece of it doesn't have as much of a influence as you think. So, anyways, we're going to jump into the intro. And let me know about the volume, guys. A new dawn is at hand. The old ways are diminished. Only corruption and deception remain. But one rises above all others. Falsely claiming salvation, they gather disciples to take all for themselves. And those who defy this deity suffer. They become servants to pain, imprisoned in solitude, barely existing. Yet only those who have been chosen possess the gift to reclaim what has been taken by the unworthy keeper. Only they can commit to such a burden. If they are able their pledge shall be rewarded. With salvation. So our journey begins. So although it is a bit difficult to follow, they, they do use that kind of wordy language, but it all has these religious undertones. If you do want a full comprehensive story breakdown, my main channel, The Inhuman One, features the only story explained video out there right now, so be sure to check it out. Anyways, first things first, we're going to go over kind of basics. You do have the ability to jump. I'm playing on the PlayStation 5, so uh, it's available on pretty much all platforms, so you can jump. You can, if you're standing still and you press circle, you can do a Symphony of the Night style backwards dash. If you're holding the forward direction, or any direction for that matter, you roll in that direction. Um, other than that, square is kind of your major attacks. If you just spam it, you can hold it as well to charge it. Once you blink, you'll be able to deal even further damage. And we're going to go over some other abilities we get along the way, but pretty much at that point, that's all we have available. L2 would be to heal. Um, R2 is to use you know, a projectile that we don't have just yet. Other than that, you do have the ability to look at the map, which is a very good map. It's an excellent map. It has all kinds of uh, functionality to it. You can place markers, things like that. The inventory is just going to show the weapons, and then you can equip the different types of weapons as well. Right-hand weapons are going to be melee weapons, left-hand typically uh, ranged weapons, and then you can have your items like heals, things like that. Stigmas are special items we're going to be looking at in just a moment, and then charms are passive bonuses that just by having them equipped, you have a uh, few boons. Alright, so first things first, always go left. If the game wants you to go to the right, do the opposite. Especially Metroidvanias. We have the Prisoner's Diary. My heart is heavy. Unlike the very few, I have no choice in what I am becoming. Something is taking over and fast. The promises that have marred the lives for years must be irrevocably broken. The heart of the Nycrux sought to redeem us all. So, that's where we stand right now. We have, um, we're kind of in a world where there is a scourge or affliction that's impacting everybody and there's kind of vying 
uh, vying go uh, gods that are vying over control of the land, so to speak. And that is the land we've been thrust into. Always be sure to uh, slice at walls. If you see me doing that, it's because I'm looking for secrets, okay? So something that you want to do as well. Oh, he got me anyways, my bad. Poorly timed dash. I was too busy up on the wall. But what you can do is you hit him here, turn around. By the time they change direction, he's already got past the threat. So the map doesn't show too much what we what we need at this point. But as we start opening it up, you're going to see how useful it is. So this red mark here obviously is indicating a locked door. Um, you have to go up so that we can progress forward. But let's go down first. It's always good to kind of do a complete exploration. You can always get some additional items that way in Metroidvanias. As you guys know, I feature lots of Metroidvanias and 100% guides. There's our first hidden wall, mind you. And we got Combustion Powder. That is how you can apply status effects to your weapons. Uh, so that would apply... Uh, it would be Fire, for example. So if we go to our inventory, we can equip our healing injections. And I normally don't really use too many of those buffs, but I think that in this playthrough, just to showcase the, the complexity of the game in a good way, I think we should definitely try it out. Alright, so we're going to go up here. All these doors are locked. I'm just getting close enough so that we can mark them as locked on our map. We don't even really need to get that close, but here we just dodge through and then just slash away. I wasn't paying attention because I was slashing the walls, but I'm going to give you guys tips on how to defeat all the enemies as well. Alright, so then there's nothing here. I'm just, I have a habit of slashing at every wall. Here we're treated to a little cutscene. There's a cloaked figure doing work on these enemies and escaping the prison. So here we have two paths, right? That door that was up there where the one creature has remained is now locked. I'm going to show you guys something kind of cool when it comes to items that you can interact with. So pots, chairs, things like that, pieces of tables. You can actually interact with them. I'm going to show you how. If you press triangle, you can throw them. And it deals damage to enemies. Now, it's not going to, you know, change the game by any means, but it's certainly a fun thing to do. These are our save points. These are altars that allow us to fast travel. Now, at this point, we haven't tagged a second uh, altar yet, so we can't fast travel at this point in time. But fast traveling is instantly unlocked as soon as you find the next um you know, altar, if you will. Alright, so here we go. So, one thing I didn't show you is the R1 plus square. You have the ability to kind of chain together these really powerful attacks, and that consumes focus. Focus is the blue bar under the red bar, which is health. So I'm going to show you what this does. If you just press R1 and square, and the combo continues. It goes on and on. It's excellent. It does a lot of damage, and it looks cool. Every single weapon has a unique um, attack that's kind of like the special attack if you will so I'll show you right now so if we do R1 and square that's the combo really neat right if you interact with these statues you get your uh, focus back there's also another way to get our focus back and you can do an execution move kind of like blasphemous this door over here is locked we'll come back to it later one thing that we're gonna do is any we're gonna mark anything that we need to come back and obtain any locked doors by nature are going to be something we're going to come back and revisit so that's not too important but if we see like a loose treasure that's just out of reach or a passageway we cannot get to we're going to be using the markers um, to go ahead and remember how to get back to those points so we'll be using this marker here that shows an NPC this marker here for places that we can't reach yet until we have the correct ability and this for treasures that are just out of reach so we have a nice little system going it's going to be great. You guys are going to love this. This game is, I think it's fantastic. It's been long in the making, but I'm so glad that we got it, you know, I finally got to actually play it. And it ended up exceeding my expectations, I should say. These shards allow you to replenish your focus in the event you're in the battle and you haven't found a statue yet or haven't gone to a save point or you can't, uh, you know, uh complete an execution or pull off an execution move because those are pretty random. You have to do enough damage to where the enemy is stunned and then you'll have an indicator. It'll be triangle that'll show you, hey, it's time to try and execute this, uh, this enemy. And if you press triangle while they're stunned, you can complete the uh, attack and you'll re regain all your focus along the way. 
And there's not going to ever be anything in these jars, anything that just like change the game up, if you will. So just a few things here. This is an area we're going to get to. That little, looks like a ring. That's a grapple hook point. We don't have the grappling hook just yet, so. We've opened the gate that was locked by that cloaked figure. And now we're here. Back to the beginning, right? So, what we're going to do... Hit our little friend. Oh, he's, just, he's over here off screen. Trying to be all cool with it. Alright. So we got our first boss here. Well, he's dead. The cloaked figure was no match. So as soon as his hands come up, we need to go ahead and start dodging backwards, okay? Because there's not much of a. Except on that one. Whenever he does blink, you want to get back enough and then duck so you can clear um, those projectiles that come out of the way. But those, he, he pretty much slams it down immediately. So if he's not taking his time raising it, then it is certainly a standard raise. So just duck here. We're going to heal. Funny story is this actually becomes a standard enemy. You'll be facing up. Alright. Watch out for phase two. Every boss has a phase two. Pretty cool in my opinion. I jumped right into that one. You got me good there. You did the thing. Flashing away. Duck right here. Oh, he doubles up. That's right. I'm phase two. Quite the jerk, I say. That's alright. Anyway, I took him out. He did have to use a few heals. And I would say use them sparingly. Don't spam them. Because the way heals work in this game is they do not allow you to replenish so like or, or they don't replenish upon saving or touching a checkpoint heals are actually consumable items so if you run out of heals you are out so say that you have 10 and then five are in your storage if you use those 10 while you're playing as soon as you save five will come back in your storage but once you use those five you're done you have no more heals so make sure you farm them up every chance you get uh, as you're defeating the enemies and there will be a certain point where the healing injections will become uh, purchasable from a certain NPC. And there's an infinite amount you can purchase. The prices do increase over time, though. But they're always reasonable. So just be sure not to spam heal because it does get to where you're going to be uh, scared. You know, it's going to be kind of scarce if you just use them all. This is the stigma of reprieve. This allows you to uh, do a... Uh, kind of a parry or counter attack. So, as the power of the Junus Ministry's enemies begins to seep into the world, this power can be harnessed by those who have fallen victim to the Ministry's terror. This stigma is used for a vicious counter attack, temporarily stunning an enemy. It's actually incredibly strong, and not only does it, it does use power, which is the third bar beneath the focus bar, but it actually restores a portion of health, and it deals quite a bit of damage. So, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely thing. Here we are. Going this way, we're just making some progress. We're gonna get to the first. Uh, this is a, here's a checkpoint, temporary checkpoint. If you will. We're gonna get to the first major hub area. But again, for each of the enemies, oh, I, I missed the opportunity to show you guys what the uh, fatality or execution move looked like. That's unfortunate. We'll grab some healing injections. I don't want to heal yet necessarily because we're gonna come up on a save point, and these enemies aren't too bad. Demi-oxide bullets. Those are great because eventually we're going to have a gun. And we'll be able to do ranged attacks. So we're going to dodge, dodge through that. I would say dash. and to dodge through it. And dodge through this one as well. Lovely. I'll be sure to showcase all of the uh, unique execution moves as well throughout this series. But here we have a map. We came from the Temple of the Deposed Gods. On the upper right path, we have Oxneyville's Manor, and on the lower right path, we have the city of Mithringal. We're going to be exploring quite a bit of the city of Mithringal today, but it is locked right now, as you can tell. So first, we need to obtain the key. So come up on this upper path here, and we'll meet Lady Helenia. She is an incredibly important NPC, 
that allow us to level up and uh, grant us passage to a safe ho a safe house, if you will. Curse bearer, you bring a dangerous affliction before me. Yet I smell fear upon your flesh. You may approach. Who is the woman that speaks before me? An interrogation will not serve you well. Your heart is murky and unworthy of the mercy of the Lady of the Manor, Helenia. My lady. You speak with respect, only now as I reveal myself to you. But your curse will always burden you. Many others like you have dwelled here in the manor. I feel a familiarity with this place. A pull I cannot explain. Many would implore me to seek freedom. But freedom is not this life's ultimate treasure. Understanding is what I seek. As do I. Then seek it. Return to me with your findings and experiences, cursed one. And through our understanding, you shall be bolstered yet. And pray, would you do me a kindness in turn? What would you ask of me? I have callings elsewhere, yet I remain. I yearn for this place, for those here with me. If you discover a teacup most blessed on your travels, deliver it to me. For a lady cannot remain in one place for so long. There are whispers throughout the manor. Whispers that reveal secrets. Spells. You will come to understand soon enough. So she allows us to level up as well. And we're going to be focusing primarily on strength. Just for the sake of this video, I think that it's going to be excellent to focus on one uh, attribute. And most weapons actually, late game anyways, require multiple attributes to be leveled. But we're only going to be focusing on strength and vitality. So let's pump up strength as high as we can. I would say that the soft caps are probably around 55 before they end up getting relatively worthless <laughs> and leveling beyond that. It's softer, it's kind of a semi-hard cap if you will. But anyways, I do want to go over the uh, leveling a bit. So vitality increases your health, strength increases your scaling with strength based weapons, so does dexterity, mind with spells, and instinct. Now uh, instinct is of course with guns. One thing that I do want to kind of share with you is that as you increase any one of these attributes, say for example strength or vitality or what have you, so say that you increase your strength, you're going to have a better resistance against a corresponding um, affliction, which would be like an elemental attack, like frozen or, or you know frost or something like that. Vitality might help you with bleeding, right? So each of these things is going to assist you in increasing your defenses against elemental damage. So pretty neat. I like that little system. So, oh yeah, we can go ahead and ch chat about the manor. Tis a strange manor. Pray, tell me more. A place of ancient splendor. Home of the Oxnavilles. Now forever tainted by the ones who called it home. Through twistedness and bad omen, people sought solitude. But alas, it is a blessing that I cannot share. Yet, now you are here. Like many before you, who have been drawn to these hallowed walls. So every time you meet an NPC, they typically have some additional dialogue they can share with you. Alright, we've got more healing injections, which is fantastic. We'll head up here. So you can see he's definitely undergoing some sort of transformation. We've made it inside the Oxneyville Manor, and to our right is Mark, the first NPC that we're going to chat with. He's actually very friendly. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just going to kind of get a lay of the land. This is the way out. Uh, this, you know, obviously there's passageways up above we cannot reach, and this will be an area for a merchant. But let's go ahead and grab this item while we can. It's the demi-oxide bullets. This entire mansion will be filled with various. NPCs that either have side quests we can complete for them or they serve as merchants. Let's go chat with Mark. 
What is this place? Ah, a wanderer. Around these parts. You truly have hardy blood coursing through your veins. Blood that I regretfully do not possess. I am Mark, and this here liquor is my courage. This liquid keeps my heart beating. The only way to heat up my sunless world. This curse has shackled me to shadow. Away from my beloved Mithringal. Mithringal. Tell me of this place. I recall my days in Mithringal with fondness, dear wanderer. Yet it is a city that now exists merely in my dreams. The contamination smote what I held most dear. The cloud still holds the city hostage. Hence why I remain here. With no hope of forgetting. Despair and distrust has overwhelmed the people. Just like our ancestors, we squabble and doubt each other's loyalty. We've not learned from their mistakes. I know of a man. He sought to rid us of such chaos. It is seldom that one steps forward to do what is right. They call him Herman. You must seek him out before your indisposition takes you. Tell me how to find him. I cannot. The path is clouded. My eyes fail me. Here, I bestow this weapon upon you. What do they call you? Ah, you are branded. So Mark gives us the Nightbane pistol, which we'll actually look at the item description when it's a little more clear. Eric, it will help protect your body. Your heart, I fear, may not be so fortunate. Take this key. I hope you find a use for it, for I am finished. So we got Nightbane pistol and Mark's key. So let's ask about Mithringal a bit. Mithringal. See Tell if he says anything place. different. I recall my days in Mithringal with fondness, dear wanderer. Yet it is a city that now exists merely in my dreams. The contamination smote what I held most dear. The cloud still holds the city hostage. Hence why I remain here, with no hope of forgetting. Despair and distrust has overwhelmed the people. Just like our ancestors, we squabble and doubt each other's loyalty. We've not learned from their mistakes. Surely you must have some desire to leave this place. If I were to leave, it would challenge the despicable power that controls our beloved Mithringal. A terrifying power no one dares to test. And that includes you. That is why you must find Herman. He is the man who seeks the cure for your affliction. So Her Herman, or more specifically Dr. Herman, is an individual we're going to be seeking out in the Federal Inquisition, which is just beyond Mithringal. So on we go. Let's go ahead and tag this first um, altar here. So now we have a fast travel point directly to the hub. So just so you know, the way they organize the fast travels is Oxneyville's Great Hall and another place we'll get at some point in the near future are going to be at the top. And then everything else is going to be pretty much in chronological order and the recommended order in which they think you should play the game. And to be honest, there's only one area, which is an end game area that you can actually get to way early. And in my very first playthrough, I went there completely under leveled and ended up beating the boss, not knowing that I was like, wow, this game is incredibly hard. But it's actually not if you play it in the correct order. Everything else is going to be blocked off or um, passage will be prevented because you won't have the necessary abilities um, to traverse those areas. So with the exception of the one area that I'm talking about. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about as we get there in that stream. It's pretty funny. Let's go over here. Another merchant will be placed here, but we'll grab some healing injections in the meantime. We'll grab the member of the household's letter. It says, When the destruction around us began, we made for the rumored passages, which would lead us to safety. Yet a scourged shadow blocked our path, ensuring a terrible fate upon us all. And we got Barsov's Electrocution, a weapon of last resort. These were studied and used by the Ethereal Order to torture infidels with constant and lasting pain. Later it was converted into a new, mightier power by Nikolai Barsov, and continues to prove itself an effective weapon. Here's a way outside. This is actually the path to the end game area that I uh, traversed to a bit early. We'll go over that, you know, in the proper time. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, make sure we have our weapons equipped. So as you can see in the bottom left, we now have the uh, Nightbane pistol. So let's take a look at it. 
you always have access to the records you've picked up along the way. So, Mark's key, this is going to open the gate to the broken pass and lock doors within the Oxneyville Manor. Uh, the Stigma Reprieve is the item that we got that allows us to do the counterattack. We talked about the Hamel of Shards, those provide you additional focus. This is just how you add fire to a weapon. Uh, the Nightfall Blade we already have, Nightbane Pistol, here you go. So, the pistols, as I mentioned earlier, are going to be scaled with uh, Instinct. Uh, we won't really be focusing much on Instinct, and uh, we will rarely use the pistols unless we're trying to hit someone from afar to finish them off. Uh, but they do have a decent amount of critical damage, and uh, they only cost one Demioxide Bullet. As the healing injections, the Demioxide Bullets are also finite items that are consumed upon use, so if you use all of them, you have zero. You can have some in storage though, however, so say you have the maximum capacity on your person to hold 10, and you use all 10. Um, if you had any additional in your storage, anything above the 10 would be stored. Once you save or die, those will come back into your inventory. And so you just need to make sure you're constantly either purchasing or replenishing the stock or, uh, you know, just managing your usage of them accordingly. So anyways, this is a Nightbane Pistol, a weapon forged in recent times but inspired by ancient craftsmanship. Despite its deceptive lightness, the pistol's ancient blueprint was modified as the mutation developed to increase its firepower with the force to pierce the increasingly tough skin of Cold One mutants. Cold Ones are the creatures that have been transformed by the Night Scourge, which is the affliction that we currently have and the affliction that has been hurting everybody. So right now we only have one right hand weapon, we're going to get a new one in just a moment. And again, as I mentioned, it's kind of odd that despite uh, the, the selection or option to sl select different classes, the option itself is relatively meaningless aside from just kind of preparing you with the proper attributes towards the type of playstyle you want. But you're going to get the Nightfall Blade first, which is a dexterity based weapon, so really weird. Uh, really weird the way they did that. Anyways, we're also going to equip Barsov's Electrocution. We already read this. Uh, Bar of Execution is a um, spell we can use. So this, the guns will use the Demioxide Bullets, which you see to the top left, are, we have nine, and then the spell will use Focus, similar to our special attack. The third bar, as I mentioned earlier, is Power. And the Power Bar is gonna be used for things like using your Stigmas. So we'll get a few along the way. All right, so. From here, we're going to go ahead and try and use Mark's key to open up some um, pass or locked doors along the broken pass. So the first locked door, of course, was this one. And with Mark's key, we now have access. So just to kind of get you an idea, we've come from the Temple of the Deposed Ones. Lots of locked doors there. We traveled the broken pass. And then we get to the Oxneyville Manor, which is right here. So I'm going to put a marker there. And then we have this locked door, which we're actually going to be able to uh, open at some point in the future. But I'm going to show you exactly how and why later. So we can open it now if we want. We have the key. So. But there's no need. We'll go over that in just a minute. All right. So we're going to dash through. Let him attack. Hopefully we can pull off an execution. I'd love to show you guys. I was trying to be nice not kill him. But... That's what I get for being nice. You can usually uh, either jump over the bullet or just dash through, but they usually position pretty far away. It's kind of annoying. Alright, let's take out these guys. Remember to stay behind them as much as you can. And I, I mash so much that it's really difficult for me to control myself. <laughs> Well, I'd love to, you know, kill this guy. There you go. Come over here, buddy. My cat got into my leg and totally threw me up. Press triangle and complete the execution, which are really gruesome and they're all unique. These little bushels here actually grant you uh, some Nycrux, which is your currency. It's the top right. So now we have 2170. This is going to be our first kind of strength-based weapon, if you will. The Skull Cleaver. The carvings and mysterious cranium depicted in the hilt of this axe elusively tell of the past waged battles. The style of the symbols dates it to just prior to the fall of Erlim, so it possibly began as a ceremonial weapon and later modified to be an effective defense against horrors. 
So we will actually be using this weapon uh, in place of the weapon we currently have. You don't have anything like encumbrance or anything, so you can hold as many items as, you know, there are slots. But we don't really care to use a weapon that's not going to benefit us. So I'll remove this, or you can replace it if you want, with the Skull Cleaver, right? And as you can see, the Skull Cleaver does have D scaling and strength. So we're going to use that instead. It does have a different moveset. Much different moveset. And good thing is, you know, although it is slower, it does actually have the ability to stun enemies. And again, you do have your charge attack, which is a variation of it, right? And then you have your um, special move, which we'll go over. But we're going to continue along the path for now. I like to break these boxes because they offer you demi oxide bullets, things like that. Jump over the dog's initial attack and just spam like crazy. These grave hounds aren't too much of a problem. We'll just come along this way. Grab all the items as we're jumping down. Turn left. Come behind him. Oh, I should have used my uh, doing the fatality. That would have been really nice. But here. There's a pit of spikes. Well, it's kind of funny there'd be a pit just randomly, right? Well, that's because there's going to be an item here. So we're going to place a marker here. I guess for now we'll do it. We'll do this, because right now we don't have the ability to traverse it. But I know that there's an item because I've completed this game 100%. Uh, so, some things you just remember. And obviously, that should be an indication to you, like, hmm, why can't I, why would they put a, a pit of spikes there's no reason for me to want to traverse that area? Well, hopefully that would give you the indications, like, I, there's something there, obviously, right? Because why would they have a pit of spikes if there's nothing at all on that side? So there's obviously incentive to go that way. We'll get the healing injections, and then we're going to tag the next altar, so now we can start fast traveling all over the place, right? So... We have the Chapel Elko where we started, the Old Ruins, and Oxneyville Manor. Oxneyville Manor is always going to be the very top one, so pretty cool stuff. We'll go ahead and drop down. This door is locked for now. It won't be open until much, much later. In the day. So don't worry about that. That did bother me a bit. I was like, gosh, when are we going to when are we going to be able to open this door? It takes some time. These guys explode, so once you hit them, keep your distance until they explode. Dead mines. And we'll be using a strength-based build, and it's going to be fantastic. I mean, we'll be doing over a thousand damage at some point in the game, and you guys are just going to love it. It's it's incredible. One thing I will mention, I want to actually show you guys something. Uh, something that I actually, one of my grievances with the game. So, if you go through a passageway and you hold the direction, you'll keep moving. So, there's going to be areas where you end up, like, right, you know, next to a pit of spikes. And if you keep holding the direction, you will fall in that pit of spikes and die. So, when you go into an area to stop moving let go of the left stick otherwise you will move further I want to prove it to you so I stopped right there on the flat part so if I keep holding it, it will appear much further see so do not uh, hold the directional button unless you're very familiar with the area that you're traversing to if not you might die to a bit of spikes like I certainly did so here if we look up we see that there's something that we can't reach yet but this is something that I can't reach because of a movement ability. I don't have a grappling hook yet, so that means we're going to mark it with the question mark. Indicating that we'll come back to it at a later date. Good thing is you don't take knockback damage when you get hit, so we didn't fall into that kind of spikes because that would have been really sad. Uh, I kind of messed up my button press there, but usually just do a jumping attack or jump over them and then slice them and then they're dead. I'm going to come this way. We are going to heal once. We took a bit of damage there unnecessarily. Alright. We can't jump over here yet. It's too far, so that's of course the grappling hook area. And we can't jump to the left either, but we're going to circle around, so if we're patient, we'll be able to get it. You have iframes, fortunately, which is really awesome. Ooh, I thought I was going to jump over that. My reflexes aren't what they should be. 
We'll grab this right here with demi oxide bullets. More healing injections. Back away from this explosive enemy. We're gonna do a jumping attack right on his head. Finish him off, and now we can use this to unlock the gate to the bottom right. But before we just go all the way to the right, we're gonna drop off to the left, remember? Because there was a little platform there. So now we can grab more healing injections. Alright, so as you can see, we've explored that to the best of our abilities. We don't have the means to traverse this area yet. So we're going to go through the open door. Or the gate that we just opened up, more specifically. This is a fun area. This is a fun area because... Um, not only does it have like a lot of secrets, but, man, I just won't forget the first time I played and I was like, wow, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. I just, I just like this particular area, though. It's a little nostalgia for me. This is also where the demo started, too. This is Old Man Wyman. He's got a little side quest, and he also is a merchant. He's not the very best merchant, but he's alright. Something catches your eye. Your wares are of no interest to me. Pity. Surely you require a, an instrument to protect yourself. This place is an unforgiving one. My darling daughter was not so fortunate. She was taken inside that place. My heart is weighed down with my grief. Nevertheless, it is a heart that would surely be lightened with a purchase. Regret is not something you will feel. What is your daughter's fate to be? It is a heavy price, but one demanded by the church. A church with prejudice against its own congregation, sucking the hope out of us all. She is in the chains of these wretched people. I must resign myself to a fate of a hunt. An all-consuming pursuit of those who hold her. I must. Your purchase will be gratefully received and will return a mere fraction of the warmth to my heart. So, what say you? But be quick, my time is limited and uh, I must relinquish my daughter from the hell she's in. Hmm. So let's take a look at his wares. Looks like his daughter's been taken away. Not good. Uh, here we have the uh, demi-oxide bullets. We already have 22 in our storage. He has 30 for us to purchase from him. Uh, aside from that, he also has some healing injections, combustion powder, and mechanical bombs, which um, are throwables that you can actually use. It's just like grenades, if you will. There's a bunch of different types depending on the uh, elemental damage that they deliver. So, he, Other than that, he doesn't offer anything else. It's just mostly consumables. But we can go this way get more mechanical bombs for free. <laughs> to be honest, I never have thrown any of the bombs. Apparently they're pretty powerful, but I've never used them. Just not my style. I'm a simple man. Give me a good weapon once I master the move sets of the of the enemies and we're just unstoppable. This is our next save point here. Of course, it's always good to tag him because it does replenish health. It also respawns the enemy, so just be mindful of that. We have demi-oxide bullets. We got some blue Hamelup shards. I'm gonna drop down here. Obviously, this pathway we'll get to at some point. Um, for now, it's something that we're gonna have to get to from around the way. So this is this does not require movement ability, right? You can tell that there's a lever there. That just means that once we explore sufficiently, we'll be able to find it. So I'm not gonna mark that because there's no, not only is there a huge blank section on my map, but also I know that it's something that we can reach. It's just something I can't reach at this point in time. Remember this for later. This is gonna be an important uh, site. There is something beneath the monument, but it's too heavy to move. The monument bears an engraving of a ring. This was the cryptic, you know, piece of information that I just simply wasn't able to decipher. And because I didn't recall this particular uh, mention of the ring that we're going to obtain, in, 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 probably by the end of this video, uh, I ended up going to the damned ruins of the Osseus Fortress, which was an endgame area, and 
room and meeting the boss over there on accident. <laughs> I always go up first. There's a way you can go inside, but I like to go up. If I can, I like to stay within a single area and not get to a different loading screen. The past deals are important because they help remove status effects, like if you're burning or if you're frozen. And each of the status effects are pretty devastating. Burn is just rough. There's an elevator that's not here yet. We can't call it either, unfortunately. We are going to circle back around, though. This is going to help lower all the way back to the main path. And no, there isn't any fall damage. If there was, I would have not only broken my ankles, but I would have died in the process. We're going to go this way, so as you can tell, we're kind of circling back around, right? So hopefully, we can clear out the area around here, right? That's the thought, anyways. Alright. Any chance you have to pick up demi-oxide bullets or healing injections, always take advantage of that. These little guys are crazy. I like to just do jumping attacks, because if not, they actually get pretty difficult to do a hit, because they move around They're like little crickets. Like little jumping crickets with knives. This door is locked. It will open soon. We're actually going to open that here before long. Here it's showing us, hey, there's an important item here, or maybe even a ladder that's tied to a, a sort of switch, as you can tell, because it's kind of locked and guarded by these like intricate designs here. First things first, let's bait the dog's attack, jump over the dog, stop the pup, and we have this guy. He just throw projectiles, so you gotta be careful with that. So I like to get behind him since he starts digging. Now he's dead. Always look on your screen to see if you can press the interact button, which on the PlayStation will be triangle. If not, look for any platforms you can jump up. So you see these little white blankets, see these white little, I don't know, tablecloth looking things. That means you can, if they're ledges, you can actually interact with. So this dude's going to start spewing blood everywhere. I'm going to shoot him a few times. There you go. Works every time. So first things first, let's go up here and take out the enemies. Because they're all throwing projectiles, we don't want to be hit by ranged attacks from off screen, like so. We'll grab this. And this. Oh, you got a fine piece of meat. I don't know if I appreciate that. Alright, so there's somebody beyond this passageway that's saying, Hey, I need assistance. I need to spread my wings. She's right on the other side of this wall, but we cannot reach her yet. So that means to us that, hey, how do we find a way to help this NPC, right? It's probably a side quest, right? So again, look. I'll always look on the screen. Triangle. That means we can interact. We got some healing injections. Oops. Over here shooting at nothing. And then... I don't believe there is anything on this side, but I certainly did move kind of quickly, so. No, so there's nothing else on this side. Nothing at all. Alright, so we're going to drop back down, and then you're going to see how, maybe, in the future, I will be able to reach this NPC. So this right here would require, to me, a, uh, a question mark, because that means, hey, this is how we get to this point, right? We're going to have to use the grappling hook, right? The one I talked about earlier. It's clearly an, an item we can interact with, but just not this time. First things first, bait the attack. There isn't really contact damage unless they're preparing to attack you or if they're really large enemies, so... Bad move. Alright, you know... Oh, come on. Where are my iframes? A little too late of a dash. And then here, we can't reach this either, right? So this is going to be something else we need a movement ability for. That would be something like maybe, what, a double jump? We need extra height for that, right? There's no grappling hook there. Drop down here. 
can break the switch. That's going to allow us to open that, uh, or drop that ladder down from earlier in the game. But instead of going there first, we're going to actually come back around. We're going to be treated to a little temporary checkpoint as well, which is fantastic. And a uh, shard if we need to replenish anything. Actually, I'm going to just go ahead and top off my health. This is something of a gauntlet, a little bit difficult. Uh, especially at first, because you have two dogs and a very powerful enemy. So remember how to take out the dogs, right? Slash, 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 dodge that initial attack of there. Now this guy, you tell it, whenever he puts his arm back like that, he's going to be rushing towards you. But he's going to crash into a wall and not protect himself. So at this point, he's pretty much impossible to hit. So if you are close to him, he'll do... AOE smashes, so just bait the lung, or the, I guess it's the charge attack, if you will. Just bait the charge attacks, just keep your distance, and then you're, you're guaranteed a victory. If he hits you, you're pretty much dead, though. So. Come on. There you go. And there you go, he's dead. We got healing injections and uh, passageway cleared. So here, this is kind of the other area, the other side of where the save point was, right? The save point that we got whenever. Like, oh, I really like this area where the old wine is at, right? So this guy's kind of powerful. What you want to do is, whenever he strikes, dodge past him and then duck. That way you can dodge the projectiles on the other side once you're clear from the AOE attack. Yeah, that guy's a jerk, so be careful with him. Here we have another thing we can't reach just yet. See? But we have this passageway here. We can get Moon Silver Stone, which is an upgrade material. So yes, you will actually be upgrading materials in this game, which is kind of cool. Which is really cool. And then from here we can go to the right, which would be the same area we were just at. I'll show you where it's at. This is where those dudes were throwing firebombs at me. We had the, the little guy, you know, the jumping cricket man with his little knife. We're going to ignore that, though. So here we have our combustion powder. Make sure to always break those. They give you, like, anywhere from one to 10,000 Nycrux. So before you go down and tag the save point to replenish your health, you gotta go here. And the reason why is because there's an amazing secret. Absolutely love it. So any Castlevania fans here are just gonna go nuts. This is the Night Tide's Route. It's a whip. It's a legend surrounding these whips say that they are made from the plucked and braided hair of the mysterious Daughters of the Night Tide for ritual use. Torture devices to push beyond the usual human threshold of pain, reach new states of consciousness, and let the power of Nycrux flow freely in liberated bodies. So just for fun, I will actually equip uh, the that weapon in my right hand, just so you guys can kind of get a feeling for it, you know? Um, it's, it's an awesome weapon, a much better moveset than the weapon we currently have, but we won't be dealing with this weapon for too long. But look at that. And then the charge attack. And then the special attack here. And just imagine how varied the, the special attacks are. They they are pretty incredible and, and they do differ quite a bit, so it's a lot of fun. Right now, the damage that we output with the uh, the whip is gonna be comparable to that that we have on our um, axe right now because the axe has such poor scaling. But what we wanna do at this point, let's go ahead and go to Oxenville's Great Hall and let's level up. And I'm also gonna show you now what the Daughters of Night Tide actually are. The Daughters of Night Tide are witches. Witches that were kind of born from the Oxneyville family. Um, this is what happened to the Daughters of Night Tide. They became those things. And variations of those things. Because they did a lot of dark magic. Um, though again, we kind of go into the story quite a bit on my Story Explained video on my main channel, The Inhuman One. Which is going to be linked in the description, of course. So be sure to check it out. Let's go ahead and grab this. Now, as you can see, there's about 20 candles here. Um, when we interact with this woman, she's going to tell us that she needs something. And she's looking for the unborn children that they sacrificed. Once we find all 20, she'll give us uh, something very incredibly important. 
my lady. Why do you push such a heavy burden? This carriage is no burden. Not compared to that which weighs upon my mind. The presence of children. Those forgotten. They are supreme and need protection. Only this carriage can provide such sanctuary. They are scattered throughout this world. And there are many away from this land of toil, where they will forever be safe. Find them, and I shall show you enormous gratitude. So once we find 10, she provides us with a certain item, and then 20 provides us with the second reward. So don't want to spoil those just yet. So we're going to go ahead and level up, and again, pump everything into strength. We'll focus on vitality at a later time. So we're going to go back here. And then we can... Go back to this manor here. Travel. And then we're going to go to... Mithringal West, which is where we left off. And again, now there will be a little bit more of a difference between our axe and the night tide whip. So just so you know, we had traveled all this way, right? And now we've essentially cleared out this section. We need to go to the right now, because remember, there is this pathway here. We can't open yet. We don't have this ring that they're referring to. And on the other side of things, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot something important. Ha ha ha. My mistake, guys. I can't believe I actually led you astray. So what we're going to do is remember that um, we lowered the ladder. Uh, that was the entire purpose of that section. I forgot to actually revisit and show you what happens when that ladder is lowered. So, we're gonna dodge this guy. Oh, lovely. I thought the fire was gonna go away by then. And now we're dealing, you know, 80 damage, so not nearly as bad as before. Not really. Reach. We're gonna jump past this because I can't believe I forgot to show you guys this. This is incredibly important, by the way. The purpose that we, you know, we lower this ladder here, so that's my mistake. And the reason why I noticed that is because if you look at your map, right, whenever you're looking at everything, you can see there's like some unexplored area here. So my apologies for forgetting that. I just got excited to show you guys the Daughters of Night Tide. So we're going to grab the healing injections and we're going to come through here. This is Mariano. He is an NPC that's incredibly important. He's going to be selling us uh, not only some weapons, um, whether it be right hand and left hand weapons, but also he grants us the ability to level up our weapons. Um, additionally, he also serves as a merchant. Sir, allow me to assist you. Ah! Stay back, scoundrel! This is no place for a traveler. What a boneheaded thing to do. You could have gotten yourself killed, laddie. And in my house, too. This is your abode? I know of a much safer place. You pulling the wool over me eyes, laddie? No. It is a safe place for many. A place free of scourge. For now, at least. Aye, I've heard whispers of it. But only whispers. Gives me the shivers it does. How do I know that I can trust you and the words you speak? You aren't one of those... Things. Hmm. Perhaps you're concealing yourself. It's exactly the manner of deception I'd expect. You could be after me artifacts. Technology many would marvel at. I assure you, I am merely seeking to find my way. I suppose it's the best offer I'll get. Aye, be seeing you at the manor. So, he will now go to the Oxenville Manor as well. And again, my apologies for me. I got ahead of myself. I was so excited to show you guys the Daughter of Night Tide, so... <laughs> Down we go. And then from here, we open up the top of this passageway that we've been traversing this whole time. So if we were to circle through, we would be right under the ladder where we got to Mariano's house. I'd just like to show you guys the visual. That way it you know, kind of clicks and makes sense together. So we have this passageway here, obviously, and then we have this passageway up over here. So let's travel this way first now that we're up here and see what or who we might find. A 
That's a mysterious NPC just kind of watching over us. Interesting. It's clearly an item that we'll have to grab at a later point. Then we have this passageway here. But instead, what we need to do is we do need to uh, make sure that we lower this elevator. Remember, in the lower level below, we couldn't even activate it, right? Or interact with it by any means. So now we have at least the means to do so, right? Alright, so let's come back here. Oh my gosh. blood piles of horses. It's, it's a little different, you know, normally you can roll through and stuff, but that just caught me off guard. So we still have this whole pathway up above, right? And we'll be searching that really soon. And it doesn't truly matter the order in which you search the areas. Typically, just so you know, in the past I've always gone up top first, but... We'll go here and grab all these items along the way. This is the Institute Sciente Report. Dear colleagues, as you can see, the wingspan of this particular cold one measures about five and a half meters, allowing stable flight. However, the others we have recovered have a premature wing structure. I believe that we face a mysterious evolution from the recent mutations. We have seen similar effects in many infected individuals. Good stuff. So clearly the cold ones are mutating getting stronger and stronger, it seems. This lady's pretty strong, so I definitely want to get behind her. You can. So she strikes. Bait the strike, get behind her. If not, she's going to do some huge damage. She's just really scared. As you can see here, there's a passageway. This means we haven't explored it yet. One that we will be able to find here very soon. But instead, we're going to go here, and we're going to actually... Uh, Miss somebody before long. All right. Be careful as you're going through this. Yeah. Jump behind. Do our jumping attacks. I was smash. I was spamming attacks. So I was unable to actually do the uh, the execution there. But I am gonna put this just so I can remember. It's gonna. We're gonna circle around here just to let you know. But I do want to kind of mark that for a visual reminder for myself. But here is Lucille, an NPC that's incredibly important for a side quest we have to complete. Remain where you are. I do not wish to be disturbed. My apologies. Yet I cannot help but notice your anguish. Not anguish, but an acceptance of the truth that has evaded me for so long. Tell me, what are you? Eric. I know whom you are, but what is your purpose here? Prayer. Yourself? To mourn. Seek refuge. Many here do. It's a place of acceptance. Finality. Forced upon us by the people up high to save themselves from ailment. A callous man haunts it. One who will doom us all in the end. So, I have accepted my fate. And became familiar with where I am destined to be. Right here. I cannot continue my life until my husband is at peace. This is impossible without the flowers. Only found in the sea city. I fear I will never be able to place them here with my beloved. It is a dangerous path, but one your strong heart can sustain. Will you bring them to me, Eric? The sea city is Erlim, and it took me a while to connect the two dots, but that's what she's referring to. So she has a side quest where she's going to want us to find these flowers so she can put her husband to rest. The Sea City. I've heard only whispers about it. Can you tell me more? A place that has seen many sacrifices to a deity that we not speak of. A place drenched in riches and in as many secrets. Wealth drove those who inhabited the City of Silver Bridges mad. 
Those riches still remain, there for the taking. Many have taken advantage of them. Perhaps you will too. A field of death. Some say it is the possession of one man. A testing grounds. I have heard whispers that he steals corpses from their resting places. Their bones, his ingredients. Evil courses through his veins, as it does through those things he's created. I pray that the church forgives him, but alas, I fear my prayers will be in vain. All right, so that's Lucille, uh, and yes, we will be getting her flowers in a future episode of this series, of course. So here we have a door that we cannot open. Um, we need an ability to open said door, though, so it's actually a certain piece of equipment, so we're going to be getting that at a later date as well. So now that we've kind of explored all of that, uh, we could go down one more level. And then we're going to go up back up to the top. This is a little different from the way I did it in my first few playthroughs, actually. Or I guess my first playthrough in my... I've only actually done one playthrough, and I started a uh, live series just on when I first, first played the game. I got a little bit past this. Right, this is a hound, a slum hound. Just like normal. Make sure you bait the attack and roll behind him. You can spam like crazy. Behind the threat, of course. There we go. And here we have not only another door that's kind of illuminated with that white light, but we also have the Corrupted Star, which is a spell. I don't really like this spell because the projectiles fly kind of randomly, but the use and the study of Corrupted Stars were considered forbidden by the Ethereal Order due to their original connection to the Daughters of the Night Tide until they were rediscovered by a group of scientists seeking refuge from the Order in our limb under the Black Hall's protection. There are powers too great to understand, but malevolent enough to indulge and destroy the minds of those who believe they can control them. Very, very true. Alright, so here we're going to go ahead and place this. I don't know the maximum amount of markers we can have, but there's certainly, um, we're certainly going to find out. I didn't place nearly this many in my playthroughs, but I'm doing it for our visuals, okay? So we have the white door here, Lucille here, white door, and then uh, some giant block we can't move yet. But we're going to be finding out exactly how we can uh, move that block before long. This area is going to be important for later. As you can tell, there's four crypts, and then there's, there's like kind of an altar type uh, place. And we're going to be revisiting this much later in the game. This is a puzzle that spans, you know, pretty much the late part of the game. Here we have some hungry essence, and then we have another way. This is actually going to lead us to something called the Federal Inquisition, which at this point in time, we can't actually even um, explore the upper levels just yet. The upper levels is where we're going to be ending off. Here we have the magnetic bomb. We have yet another door with the white ethereal light. And then uh, from here, we know, hey, I'm not going to place two, but there's also something else that hmm, we can't interact with. But I wonder why. Do we not have the proper equipment or ability to traverse that kind of wall? I dare say we don't. So now we're back in the city. We're going to go to the top, and that's where we can solve the puzzle. I'm glad that I did it this way for you guys because I think it's going to be a little bit better from a visual perspective to see, oh, okay, so now that we've unlocked all of this area in the map, all that remains is what we've yet to explore, So, um, which is just the top area. And there's going to be a series of puzzles that we need to solve so that we can progress forward. So all in all, I'd say that um, I think that's a better route to take so that you can kind of get a better picture of the map. And then we're going to go back up. So here we're going to go left, okay, because this ladder we can't reach just yet. And if I recall, this should be a clear path up unless I am crazy. Which we can't put out the question just yet. All right, here goes. Jump, Eric. Play with me, boy. We're going to take the elevator up. We're going to go to the right. This is where that strange individual is just watching over us. Another slum hound. Just remember, dodge the attacks. 
All right, good to go. We see another one of those um, grappling hooks right here. So we know that's gonna be important for later, right? Must be. Dodge through. Bait the attack if they ever want to attack. One, two, if not, they just do strikes, so. There you go. That's what I was waiting for. Remember, jumping attacks are key. They kind of stun them and stop them. If not, they're really tough. They're, they're squirmy little guys, so. They're not the easiest to hit. One, two, and then we can slash like crazy. Typically, stunning them along the way. The hitboxes and the collision detection is incredibly generous when it comes to you swing, so you can obviously hit them pretty easy. I love throwing furniture. Oh, the simple things. So here we have some middle mist pastilles. That's again for putting out fire. We'll save here as well so we can have plenty of health. Um, and then we can't go down yet because it's locked, right? So this is locked. So for now we're just going to go to the right. Careful with the flying enemy. The ranged enemies are typically the more uh, problematic to deal with, so we just need to be careful here. We have this passageway down here, which has little puppy dogs. Dodge through. One, two. Just remember which attacks, which enemies doing which attacks. It's still very manageable to fight more than one enemy at once. Pick up the mechanical bombs, and then you're gonna see that this passageway is actually locked. So, hmm. Guess we'll have to go around. There you go. Taking out these weird bat dudes. This gate here is going to be opened by a series of three um, kind of locks, if you will. And you see those three bars, they kind of correspond with each of the locks we're going to be finding in the immediate area. But first, let's kind of clear these out. Use that very generous collision detection. Hit bonus to go ahead and take these guys out from safe angles, of course. We'll come up here, take out this bat, bait the strike. Pick up the mechanical bomb along the way. We'll go this way first. Dodge through, do a jumping attack. Dodge through. Mess that one up. And we'll come up here, because if you can see, there's a one of three chains we need to break so we can remove some of the locks. Here we have three healing injections and the chain right here. So just spam it, attack it, break it, and you're going to see that the bar removes. That's bar one of three. We'll continue this way, just so we can get the rest of the completion of the map. here we have old ashes. This is a fun attack actually. Um, I'll read it first. It says, these powders are produced by students of alchemy at the Institute Scientia under the guidance of senior scientists. However, their teachings are followed blindly, ignorant of the ancient technologies at their foundation. No one truly understands the process, the knowledge lost to time. The, it's a kind of a fire based ability that you can do a kind of like a dashing punch where it's you know lit on, lit on fire and it's really awesome. So as you can see there, I was trying to show you guys a platform. This is something up here that we'll be able to reach at a later time. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. Again, uh, a lot of fun. I mean, this game is a lot of fun. It's got all kinds of great lore, and uh, I'd say the one thing that I love about this game, actually I absolutely love, is the, the complexity of the fighting. I mean, you can just do square and mash like I do, or you can use a whole bunch of different uh, complex techniques that really end up you know, beefing up the game, making it a lot more fun, and uh, the replayability kind of starts skyrocketing. So it's a really good game. I, I do enjoy this game quite a bit. As a big fan of Metroidvanias, I was hoping that it would be good, and I didn't realize it was going to exceed my expectations. But when it comes to combat, it's, it's definitely 
quite complex in a good way. This is the door to the area where the dogs were, the two dogs that we just faced off with. So, interesting area. Not one that's very useful, but interesting nonetheless. Bait the strike. One, two, and then we go ahead and slash away. We got another puppy over here. Come on. Flash away like crazy, and then we're gonna go this way. Oh my gosh. Dodge! Kill the ranged guy, they're always the problem if you ask me. Get behind her and do some slashes while she's turning around. Now, if you see here, this is gonna be the area that we just never got around to. <laughs> Never got around to exploring, right? But this is just the other side of the um, the elevator, right? So if we go up, we'll go right back to the save point, right? But what we're going to do really quickly is, since we've already explored all of this, we've been very thorough in our search, we're going to go this way. And you might remember this in just a moment. I'll show you. This was probably the first lock that we saw. But I'm going to show you why you might remember it. Because if we were to go down, you would see the lady with the umbrella and the bat creature. See? So now we've kind of come full circle, right? But we don't have to go down there anymore because we've already met Lucio and we've already seen the second entrance to the Federal um, federal Inquisition area. So we're all good to go. So instead, we're going to go down here just for a second. Dodge through that. We're going to dodge this strike to do a jumping attack and then slash away. And then we're going to lower this and then grab the item. This is now completing another area that we had already seen. So I can remove this little secret here. And see where the two little babies were? And I was like, hey, I can't reach it yet. Now we've come full circle, right? So now what we do is we're going to go back from whence we came. And instead of going left, we're going to go all the way to the right. And this should lead us to the final mechanism that we need to break. So we can go and explore the Federal Inquisition area. So there you have it. All in good fun, right? So, I mean, I love it. The level design in this game is, is very surprising. Um, I didn't think it would be this good. There were a few things in the demo that I was concerned about, and mostly had to do with the movement. And they addressed a lot of those things. And all in all, I'd say that they made some huge improvements to the game. So I'm really happy with the final product. So anyways, we've done quite a good job of exploring this area so far. Only limited to things we cannot even access at this point. So in we go to the Federal Inquisition. But before we continue, let's go ahead and level because we have quite a bit of Nycrux to use. At this point in the game, the Nycrux, or the leveling I should say, the Nycrux flows freely. But the leveling is quite cheap, so you definitely want to take advantage of it. So here we're going to level up, and we're going to pump up our strength, and now we can go ahead and get our vitality maybe up to 15. Um, the goal will be maybe to get it, our strength to 35, vitality to 20, and then we just keep going from there. Uh, we definitely want to keep it, you know, relatively close. We don't want to go too far where we don't have any ability to, uh, you know, Take a hit. I am gratified to lay my eyes upon you once more. If we speak to Mark, he's going to reward us. Um, typically, as we, you want to speak with the NPCs. Continue speaking with them every chance you get, every time you reach a new area or defeat a boss. And what will happen is you'll eventually get rewarded um, with certain items that can either increase your healing capacity, uh, how many heals you have, or even can increase the number of bullets you carry. Be careful because now these enemies have a new addition to their attack, that will kill you in pretty much one hit because it hits you multiple times. Each of those projectiles can do individual damage, so it's pretty devastating. When you hear that scream, they start grabbing their heads, you know something bad's gonna happen. So here we'll pick up the static pastilles. This is a way to remove um, electricity. Now, we're probably going to get shocked at some point in time, so I will actually apply these. It's incredibly annoying when you get electrocuted, you freeze up every once in a while and you cannot move any further. So, just avoid these puddles. Be patient. 
avoid these attacks and don't panic. Just because they attack you, don't panic. Alright. Now we've got the magnetic bomb. Good for us. Drop down. Move this way. Get behind the attack. I'm gonna clear out the potential threats first before we do any exploration. Give me that. Okay, yeah. Got the healing injection. Free heals. Love it. I want to take these guys out. Get behind the attack. If not, I'm telling you, you will regret ever getting in front of that. It casts a uh, Nightmare, which is a new type of ability we've yet to interact with, and man, it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. We're gonna dodge roll through this. We're gonna explore to the left first. We're gonna be blocked off by what we can and can't explore anyway, so it's fine. This is a new type of enemy. Dodge through the attack. He does have a projectile that increases in speed as it grows in size. Dodge through, get behind him, and some three shots and he's dead. He's one of the stronger enemies you're going to be facing off with, at least at this point in time, so kind of annoying. Definitely an annoyance, especially when you fight more than one at the same time. But be patient when you're traversing through these puddles of electricity. I know it's going to be annoying and you want to just get through it, get through it, but don't do that because you'll just end up hurting yourself. So we lower the elevator and we open the door. So now technically you could just take the elevator up and go all the way right through the door and then we'd go you know, where we were stopped off at. But we're going to continue exploring. We're going to check this area out first. As you can see, there's clearly something that it connects to, right? So. Let's do some exploration and see if we're rewarded for our inquisitive minds. Healing injection. We'll take this lift down. Oh, and guess what? We are right back where we started, right? Where the ethereal door was and the passageway that we couldn't climb up. So now we've come full circle, right? I think that's exciting. Now I want to see if I trigger it, so I know that there's a, there is an event that happens right here to the left, but I want to see if we trigger the event now. No, it's not been triggered yet, and that's fine. That's just something for later. We'll certainly go there after we defeat the boss of this area. So now what we can do, we can go back around. And now I'm going to show you how far we can go on this side before we just go up the ladder safely. But you can tell they've clearly been doing some sort of experimentation on these creatures. So this is something we can't pass just yet. <laughs> clearly, right? And it's not an ability, but it is something that will, there's a mechanism kind of preventing us from making progress. So we're going to have to figure out how to deactivate said mechanism so we can make some progress, right? Because it's preventing us from moving forward. Alright, so here we go. We're going to go up and to the right. This is where we unlock the door. Alright, here goes. Fun stuff here. Little gauntlet. Ooh, I didn't back up enough. I'm gonna go ahead and heal, because I took way more damage than I thought I would in that one little encounter. But this should finish him off here. There you go. Now we'll go upstairs and take out the little pumpkin head dudes. Ah, uh, yeah. Missed. We got this beautiful lady. There you go, took her out as well. We'll come up here and grab the goodies, why not? We get some magnetic powder. That applies electricity to your weapon. Bait the strike, dodge through, and do a jumping attack first. Once you defeat all the enemies, you can see or hear like a locking mechanism, you know, pretty much disengage. And that means that now the area is opened up to us. So we're no longer like trapped in here. 
All right, so now up we go. Good stuff. We're making some great progress, by the way. Dodge through. Don't panic because there's more than one enemy. So that was my special attack. You do get some iframes on it, but unfortunately I wasn't able to make much use of it. You do have to kind of know where you're going to land. And I missed an execution, which a, it's a brutal one. That would probably get me demonetized. But I'm willing to risk it. Here we're going to tag a temporary checkpoint. There's a locked door here. This locked door is incredibly important for later. And then we have this right here, which is going to be locked by an ability that we're going to get very soon. I'm so glad we have so many markers available to us. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to go down and around. No need to mark this because I know that we're going to find the solution to this puzzle in just a few moments. So They gave us that friendly... Uh, <laughs> little checkpoint just in case, you know, we get stuck or smashed to death. So in case we become mashed potatoes. Alright, that was terrible. I'll go ahead and heal off screen so no one actually sees my humili humiliation. And then we're gonna go this way. Alright. One more little dodging gauntlet here. Let's be very mindful of the hitboxes here. And then just slash away like crazy. That's gonna deactivate all of these little hammer things that have been pestering us this entire time. And now we know, remember, there was a sequence that we had earlier before we even got to the main area, right? If you recall. And that's where we're going to be headed next. So this is obviously the shortcut to the area that we just came from. We can break this. This is going to deactivate another lock here, right by the checkpoint. So now we're all good to go, right? Remember though, before we just rush off to that area, we do need to go back. We do need to go back. This is now an open for us, right? But we need to go back because there is a whole area that we uh, could have searched and it's going to be right here. So it's always important to mark things like that unless you have an excellent memory. Um, in some games you're just kind of forced to use your memory, but fortunately The Last Faith does have a good map and marker system. So, we can always go back and remember, oh, this is an area that I definitely need to revisit at a later point. And now that we've deactivated those, like, smashing, the mashed potato makers, we need to go ahead and uh, explore areas that are now open to us that were previously blocked off or inaccessible, right? So here we go. We're going to drop down here. Not get electrocuted. Good thing we haven't had to tag any save points or die, so all of the enemies are still dead. But here we go, see? Now we're safe. We can just freely traverse this area, and guess what? We have a free treasure. And this is the healing holster. This increases the amount of heals you can have at any point in time. So, a city-made holster constructed to hold extra healing injections. It is standard equipment of all mythical guards. So, now we can hold more than the standard, you know, whatever it may be you know, seven or six or nine, whatever it's going to be. We're going to actually see how much we can hold once we get to a safe point. Oh my gosh, okay. I was trying to rush it and it worked. Sometimes it's good to gamble. As long as you bet on yourself. Just kidding, gambling's evil. But I took a risk and it paid off. Saved myself three seconds. All right, here we go. So we're gonna come up and around this way. Back to where we came. And all we're gonna do is go through that door that we unlocked. That'll lead us to another area in the Federal Inquisition, which is just right over here. 
you can see this door is locked, but I this is different. For, safety, for the light to return to us. Save us from the chill. Unknown our hearts from this evil. But this door is a standard Dark Souls door. It won't open from this side. So that means that it's not locked by a key, but we have to come around and open it from the other side. Alright, so you see that this is a locked door up here. This is important for later as well. We'll come this way, tag the save point, and guess what? We have a fun little encounter over here to deal with. Something of a mini boss fight, if you will. I think the way they move is just so creepy. That's their whole intro, and they're pretty much like invincible while doing their intro, so don't try and spam like I did. I was just. These guys are a little bit stronger, so they do have a little bit of contact damage, but nothing that's gonna just break the game. You know? They use bleed, that's their primary source of dealing damage. And bleed will hurt you really bad. If you get infected with bleed or afflicted with it, uh, you actually, anytime you roll, you'll take like a big chunk of damage. So just be very careful. But other than that, just jumping attacks is going to take them out. Just be patient, watch each of the attacks. They have lunges, they have little scratches, things like that. But they typically telegraph what they're going to do. Like, he's going to do a scratch there. And there you go. That's the mini-boss fight taken care of. Infection Purge. And we got 2,000 more Nicrux to spend for fun. So we're going to go this way. And we're not done yet. We're going to grab these healing injections. Dodge through. And right up here, there's a door we can't reach, so... We're gonna go ahead and mark this. Not a safe place for me to go there. I had to retreat. I'm not proud of that, but it happens. Another bad move. That's okay though. And when you're on a roll, you're on a roll. I'm an electrocuted. That's wonderful. Oh gosh. Not good. Go ahead and heal our electrocution. <laughs> Any chance now. There you go. That's what electrocution does. It freezes your, mo your movements randomly. It's so annoying. I was just trying to be fancy, but now I'm using all of my heals at once. So here we're going to see a different type of passageway. This is a door we can't open just yet until we get something kind of special for it. So we'll revisit this at a later time. Reveal some pretty special lore. More magnetic bombs, items that we may never use. Take care of this little bastard here, and we're gonna keep moving on. This is gonna just lower the passageway to the safe that we were just at. So now we have we can hold nine heals, right? That's what that healing holster did for us. We come up here, we're in Dr. Herman's office. We're gonna get his key. The carrier is granted entrance into the depths of the pursuit of ancient knowledge. Locked away in the walls of the Inquisition. Puppets of the unquestionable power led by Dr. R. Herman plunged into the darkest depths in the name of the faith. Twisted experiments obscured from the light of day, but to what end? So was Herman really this savior, a, people, a person looking for a cure? Or was he something altogether different? We'll find out, but first we're going to go to the Oxneyville Manor and level up. We have 5,000 Nycrux, we would hate to waste that. Excellent. So now we can return. And we'll go back to the Inquisition foyer. Actually, Inquisition Inner Sanctum would be better for us. It's right next to the locked door. This is going to lead to the boss. 
Now this boss is in the de he was in the demo. He's not the easiest, but I mean he's got two phases. Many of the bosses either have one or two phases, or they completely change their attack pattern at around half health. He's got a little bit of all of that, so <laughs> we used Herman's office key, and now we see Doctor Herman himself. Stay away from me, please. No, keep back. I can't. I have found it. Stay away. Please. I have finally done what I sought out. I will not let you do this to me. I know your soul. One of a cursed man who destroyed the life I had. So he injected himself with something so he could transform himself into a night not so good person. He has some huge strikes that you cannot really get behind him immediately when he's striking, because if not, he'll get jacked up. He does after this. He, te he telegraphs most of his attacks, unfortunately. You want to get behind him if at all possible? Back away from this and then watch the little AOE strike for this. Uh, opportunity to do triangle move, definitely press it because that's going to deal some huge damage. Dodge through, watch the second strike, and then go ahead and attack. Dodge through every chance to get one, and then two, he has two hit combos. Yeah, okay, I didn't get to dodge through that, I actually went the wrong way. Okay, one, and two, and then we're going to jump through. He's about to get crazy with it, so we'll try to watch this. Now his first phase is completed. Second phase is a little different. He has this weird little thing he can do where he becomes a pool of blood. If it's too close to you, he will actually start healing himself. And then those little pools that you see on the floor, those are actually damaging. You. Always jump towards the way he came from in those instances. And then once you come out of your roll, jump. There you go. Like that. Easy peasy. He gets a little crazy in phase two, something of a little bullet hell type mechanism that I see here. Dodge this. Go through the little projectiles. Make sure that they don't hit you because they will knock you back. One of the few items that actually do that seems to be annoying. Dodge where he comes from. And then some free strikes. Remember, he can heal every time. This is a big AoE attack here. Dodge. Stay out of the way. He'll spam that, so just be careful. Watch when he's going to attack. He does kind of telegraph again. He rejects it, so nothing too crazy. Jump away. Jump towards and jump. Okay. Now we wait for this, and now he's dead. So that was first try. Dr. Ridley Herman. So not so bad. Not a bad attempt. Abomination vanquished. He had been experimenting on these creatures, but not for a cure. He had, looks like he was seeking power for himself. We'll drop down here. Nothing we can do yet, but I'll show you why. Once we come in here, We'll grab the healing injections, and we'll meet someone by the name of Annabella. Those are not familiar footsteps. Who are you? Eric. I have come to help. Where is Ladak? I do not recall any Ladak. He is the Lord of the Cathedral. He... Hmm. You are a defiant with a heavy heart. The Nightcrux is taking hold of you. I feel a force taking hold. My heart is weighted. My mind is clouded with no light to guide me. 
And now I have killed the one who was meant to grant me salvation. His blood on my hands. Herman. A man seeking a cure for the mutations. Alas, you must seek comfort from this. Herman was not the man many thought him to be. Why do you speak these words? Who are you? I am Annabella. I was trying to find a cure for the mutations, help Herman with his research. But he went mad. I couldn't carry it on alone. And then, he imprisoned me. Herman was determined to weed as much as possible from me by force. These laboratories are more than meet the eye. The dead are sacred within these walls and attended to with more care than any living being. Under our feet are the chambers of the city dwellers who came before. Dwellers of influence and prestige. There are many palaces around the world people trapped within. We must not stop until these people are free from the threat of the heinous. Free from the promises they proclaimed so long ago. Of what do you speak? They are ancient forces of evil, branded onto sacred objects, corrupting them. Many do not dare utter their name, as they corrupt the minds of many. Yet, I condemn such fear of a name, for I see many horrors more unspeakable than the sepulchre. You have my assurance of help, Annabella. Eric, the name of a troubled man who does not yet know his way, the Nycrux will be your guide. It attracts them, you see. They will find you. That is a fate I am not eager to dwell on. Then you understand fear. That is courage in itself. You must leave this place. Find shelter at the manor. What about you? What will you do? Rid myself of this affliction. Find the Lord of the Cathedral of which you speak. It's the best hope I have. Lord Ladakh is not to be trusted. His spirit is cursed by the unspoken beings of the Junas Ministry. I will take care. Very well. But I hope to see you also at the manor. Soon. So now we have the gravitational ring. This is important. We'll read it from here. I have found what only whispers have spoken of. This jewel has granted me leverage over gravity. A way to the path towards emancipation. Yet I feel something. Rage, hatred, hunger. A shadow. We can now move boxes. Giant boxes like that. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to go through so we can trigger... Hopefully her eventual movement, and we're gonna go this way. She will return to the manor, though. I'm just kidding. She, she, she behaves. We'll go this way first. And remember, we did mark another one of these, um, not too far away in the Mithrangul area. But our first treasure is, of course, a Moon Silver Stone. Moon Silver Stone is again the upgrade material for uh, regular right-handed weapons. You'll get a secondary material called Demi-Shade Ore that is used to upgrade special weapons. So essentially we have explored all of this that we can at this point in time. Um, I want to say that this right here is the area that I was referring to with the box, but I could be wrong. This is the second box, and then we have a third box in the Mythical area. So we're going to move this over, come over here get our second treasure and a little bit of lore too demi shade ore is this of course right here and this have you ever seen an item next to a bunch of crumpled up papers that's of course lore anonymous anonymous little nemo anonymous note there is one who saw the two unseen oracles forcibly torn from them they were bestowed to this bestowed sorry to this gift world there is one who saw the two unseen oracles forcibly torn from them they were bestowed to the, this world as a gift. Their affinity with a nameless and mystic entities, a unique and blessed endowment. There are a few who can wield the same kinship with the obscurities of their unknown kin. At first you're like, what does that even mean? It's, it's funny because they're using a lot of play on words here, but there's something they're referring to that's going to be key to obtaining the true ending of the game. 
which is what I'm going to show you guys how to do. Oh my gosh. Wrong button. Oh, wrong button. Jump. Excellent. All right. Get out of here. So, honestly, I guess we could just go back to the save point. Um, there's not a big use to do all this. So let's go to the save point, actually. And from there, we're going to travel back to the Mithrigal Manor. Or Mithrigal Manor. <laughs> we'll travel back to... Oh, no, no, no. There is a point to what I'm doing here. I apologize. I apologize. The reason why is because... We do need to actually come back this way, but instead what we'll do is we're going to take a little bit of a shortcut. Uh, we do need, there's still one event I'd like to trigger from the Mithringal, um, well, from the Federal Inquisition, which is going to have an event, or tied to an event in the Mithringal Manor, so here we go. My apologies, got a little mixed up there. Uh, okay, so we, we're traveling from here to here. And remember I said, hey, it's important to go to this one area because there is an encounter that happens. Well, that's what we're going to try and trigger. So if we go to the map again, we're going to go down to this area. And then we're going to go down one more level, okay? And from here we'll be able to hopefully trigger the event that I saw uh, on my very first playthrough of the game. And I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of interesting. So we're going to go down one more level right over here. And this is going to take us to the first area that we can go from Mithrindle to the Federal Inquisition. But instead we're going to go from Federal Inquisition to Mithrindle. And there should be an encounter that happens. Yes, we got it. We got it. So here we go. Her body and her soul needlessly sacrificed. For now the church have sinned. These are the consequences. <laughs> It is a moment I will never cast from my mind. I have seen to it that the man who seized her has paid his debt. Her body. All right, so now he, you know, his daughter has passed away. And this is an encounter that if you don't come back through here, you will completely miss this. Her body will not be there, and this encounter will not occur. So it's incredibly interesting. I actually am pretty happy that we were able to trigger it. So immediately after defeating Dr. Herman, if you go down that path that I showed you on the map, then you'll be able to see that encounter for yourself. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, travel to the nearest uh, save point and altar so we can return to the Oxneyville Manor. Really, in this case, you have to die now. But the reason why I wanted to come to here is just because this is the area that has the last secret. Um, that has the box, anyways. That's, I'd say, not the last secret, but the one that's at least attainable at this point in time. This early on, if you will. And the reason why I believe this is so important is because... Normally, this would be something you could easily pass up, and you might not even get to this point, because it's like so early on, you don't necessarily realize the importance of it, right? But we're going to come this way first. We can kind of get an idea, lay of the land, if you will. Locked door, nothing special there. But this area, when I found pretty early on, I wasn't quite sure of what it was here for. But it is very important. And here we have Katarina's Church. So we got healing injections, and then along the way, we're going to see Katarina. Pardon the interruption. It is not me you impede, but the gods to whom I answer. However, they are gods of the highest mercy. I am grateful for their clemency. The path to where you seek may not be so forgiving. A path blockaded with danger for a long while. Only death and despair you will find if you are successful in your quest. However, I sense you are built for such a task. The truth may betray you, or steer you to madness. Remember that. I have witnessed lonelier men than yourself foolishly pursue a possession they were never destined to have. One such man lies, deformed in the abyss of the crypt below. A betrayer, 
who scoured fruitlessly for what he desired, recruiting the lowest of the low to seize what he deemed rightfully his by despicable means. Neither his blood nor intentions were pure. I fear he has become overwhelmed by the evil he sought to consume and manipulate. By the Shadow Scourge. That is why I pray to find answers to questions I have, and to some I do not. The spirits that haunt these lands cloud my mind. Their power is unwavering in the minds of many more. Minds infected by the sepulchre. Then you must stop before you become infected too. Your concern is appreciated. However, your apprehension needn't be focused on me. I sense you have much to do, and must preserve your strength. Here, I may have something that will lighten the load on your heart. So she is also a merchant that sells an infinite amount of the blue hamel of shards. So you have pretty much an un, uh, you know, a, an infinite source here of these items if you use them. If you're a spirit user or spell user, things like that, it's pretty good. And lunar power adds ice to a weapon. These remove frost, and then this is just a bigger um, shard, you know, so it, re it recovers a bit more focus for you. So pretty cool stuff. Let's ask about the sepulchre before Pray, we go to the tell me more about Manor. These sepulchre. You must not utter so freely about such things. Incapable of mercy, their vision clouded by greed. An encounter with such a foul entity ends in certain death. Fear is a logical reaction to such horror, a force that casts its shadow over us all. The clouds bled the day they arrived, the stains still corrupting the sky above where they now cower. We desperately need our salvation. Could I provide such relief? Perhaps it is a path you could take. Although, those with the same desire have been burned beyond recognition. Convinced the only way to vanquish the power was to absorb it. Should your weak body attempt to absorb such might, return to me, for I may be able to bolster what little strength you have. Alright, good stuff. And obviously you can tell there's a, there's a ledge up here that we can't reach yet, so obviously something that we need to obtain that we just can't, right? There's another secret in this area that I will reveal to you at a later time, but uh, we'll, we'll more on that later. <laughs> For now, let's travel to Oxenville's Great Hall, and now you see these are going to be the two top areas at any point in time. Katarina's Church and Oxenville's Great Hall. From Oxenville's Manor, um, we'll go ahead and speak with Your will our friend. grow stronger, Eric. Here. Use it wisely. And Mark will give us the Federal Issue Belt. This increases our ammunition. I am gratified to lay my eyes upon you once more. He also talks about the infection and the ethereal order, so let's go ahead and hear what he has to say. I sense agitation in you and befuddlement. Has the mutation taken you within its merciless grasp? Soon the cold will overwhelm you, wanderer, make a monster of you. You will become one of them. Your heart all consumed. You are not the only wanderer I have seen fall into this affliction, recognizable only by the mark you bear, a mark of insurrection. The walls of the place where I was held captive were adorned with this symbol, the same as lined Hermit's halls. The symbol of devotees to the gods. They themselves are a poison. Contaminating past the cathedral and Mithringal borders. The creatures that lie in wait there are overcome with that symbol as they grow stronger, spreading their infection into the hearts of innocents. The cathedral? A place descended from the heavens. It shows us who will rule us and how we must honor them in death. It is an ancient tradition, founded at the city's birth. What happened to the proprietors of such a place? The people of the cathedral were determined to survive. Their solution was to synthesize a power most great to see to their survival. But it spread, mercilessly infecting many, taking their hearts for its own. You may feel the Nycrux clamping your heart in a vice this very moment, young wanderer. But the hearts of these creatures are pure, undiluted evil. We 
do not dare speak their names. All right, so now we have all this uh, additional um, information that they've given us in regards to the lore. If we go over here, we now have Mariano, remember? We sent him here a while back. It seems you were right, laddie. This place sure did come up with the goods. Fancy anything you see? So now you can see you can level up weapons, which we're not going to do until we get one weapon in particular that is just fantastic. I absolutely love the weapon. Use it for my entire playthrough, and it was just amazing. He does sell an infinite amount of demi-oxide bullets, so he's your source there. And eventually, he will also sell an infinite amount of moon silver stone and, and some demi-shade ore. The technological gloves are going to be important for us to get at a later point in time, so we can uh, get some key items much later in the game. So uh, make sure you save up 10,000 for uh, in the near future. Now, Annabella should be off in this chamber where the kind of dining table was. So we're going to go over here and speak with Annabella. And she will sell. Uh, an, an infinite amount of healing injections and then different pastilles and things like that. None of them really sell firearms or melee weapons until unless it's Mariano who does. Let's inquire about the infection, the ministry, and sacred places which are going to lead us to where we need to go. Tell me more about the curse that has its hold on me. Unrelenting, but made by those who should have held the wisdom bestowed upon them by the common being. It is a great shame that such folly should tarnish the lives of the majority. What can you tell me of Laddick and this Junus ministry of which I've heard whispers? A man unworthy of his position, his power obtained through distraction and deceit. Alas, the resting place is not the only location Laddick has soiled with his muck. He controls many of the sacred places we once called home. The mark you bear is one I have seen before. Whispers say it is the mark of the imprisoned, the disgraced. But that is what a man like Ladakh and his misguided ministry would want you to believe. Neither he nor his erroneous clergy is to be trusted. What can you tell me about these sacred places? It would be wise to reflect upon the true self. For you will find a place of mirrors that show a reflection unrecognizable. It's people driven mad by experimentation. A cage created by a power that should be unimaginable, but is greatly sought. Another is buried deep in rage. Even the bones of our civilization are open to Ladakh's wrath. Uprooted and now fallen in ruin, in the deep forest, he has taken our churches, our homes, our... Another is shrouded in numbness. Despite Ladakh's influence, he has an adversary he does not dare to face. A man in his sordid kingdom, where the snow never ceases. The final... Well, this is when Ladakh himself must be sought in his lair. But the opportunity to defeat him will be limited. For all other threats must be eliminated before he can be destroyed. Return to me once you have truly comprehended the threat we face and the places most revered. Only then will you begin to understand. Only then can I gift you with more than just words. Alright, so... I do not do this step, okay? So I'm saying it right now, do not do this. Do not do what I did. It'll be hard. So pretty much what I did is I exited from that area, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember seeing this because I was searching around. I pulled this, and I and I went all the way up into the left, and I entered the one of the end game areas. It was very tough, especially at this level. I was much less leveled. I think I was at level 20. Let me see what level am I at right now. Yeah, I was at less than this level right now, and I went ahead and started exploring the damned ruins of the Osseus Fortress and defeated the Starlight Beast, which is a creature you don't even have to fight until the very end of the game, and it was tough. So uh, don't do that. That'll make you very unhappy. 
Let's go ahead and speak to Lady Helenia, and then we can uh, level up. The presence is beginning to consume you, curse bearer. Reject it. Fight it. You must not underestimate its power. A poison in disguise, but one that does not kill. It devours, leaving little in its wake. It works slowly, methodically, yet it has no mind of its own. A remedy you must find. A quest you must set out upon to seek it. Your silence unnerves me. I sense a trepidation in you taking hold. Do not fear what is in your heart. For it continues its rhythm, no matter what the body endures. I have seen many cursed bearers driven mad by their fear. I fear you may succumb to the endless night. A blindness, never to cease, and a blistering cold. Many say they will be mindful when faced with such a warning. Take heed. Your mind is the least of your troubles, cursed bearer. Alright. Good stuff. So, essentially at this point in time we have covered quite a bit of ground. Super excited about what we've seen so far. And our journey will continue in the next stream. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, it, this particular video. And if you did, be sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know you want more content just like this. If you guys are enjoying the 100% guides, trust me, I absolutely love doing them. They do t take quite a bit of time and, and effort. So anytime that you guys can, you know, just come over here, drop a like or something, it's greatly appreciated. It just helps with the, you know, push the video so that more people can view it and see it. And it really just helps me out. So I really do appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys are having a great holiday week as well. And uh, we will be picking up the second part of our 100% Guide for the Last Faith in the next video. As like I said before, your viewership is more than appreciated, but if you want to support me in a more personal way, I do have a Kofi and Patreon page you guys can always check out for exclusive perks like emojis and more. Until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out. I'll catch you guys next time.